What's going on everybody? Um, day two on trying to get the house re-plumbed. You've probably seen a bunch of the footage already of me in the crawl space rolling around, um, getting covered in water, mud, and everything else, which luckily that crawl space is in really good shape. Uh, but I'm trying to get everything re-plumbed. Uh, I'm kind of running this middle of the video to kind of explain some of what I was doing. I'm trying some different things as far as how I'm putting information in the channel. But uh, so basically, the what you've seen me doing so far is I cut out the uh, original main, which wasn't a main, it, it's a pressure regulator that they had plumbed in. But the, the main came into the house, there was nowhere to shut the water off to the house. So in a minute, I'll grab the camera off, I'll walk around and kind of show you a couple of the things that I'm getting ready to explain, but what I did was in the room that the main is below the floor, I'm cutting in a four by 10 register floor uh, grate that I'll have sealed off, but in the case of an emergency and needing to shut the house water down, I'll be able to just pop that floor grate out, reach down and turn the main off, or if we leave town, whatever, whatever we want to be able to shut the water down for. So I re, uh, Replumbed most of the entire main feed is what you've seen in the video so far. So that's about 50-ish foot of pipe. I put a ball valve in, new new ball valve, um, re-glued onto the main, and then ran everything in PEX to the water heater. So what I've got to get underneath of there and do today is to cut into uh, that three-quarter line and do all of my uh, half-inch supply feed offs for toilets, sinks, vanities, um, washer box, all that. And then, and then also run my hotline feed. So you saw me hook into the water heater with my PEX run. And that's how I typically hook up uh, most water heaters. I had a comment earlier uh, yesterday on the channel asking me about how I hook up water to uh, water heaters. I couldn't tell if the comment was referring to the height in which I do the rough end for the plumbing or if it was just the, the comment was about how I hook up a water heater. What I explained to the gentleman was is as far as rough end height on water heater, unless you have a specific water heater that you've already bought or picked out and you can measure the height of, it's going to be pretty tough to determine what the rough end height needs to be or if you're coming out of a wall with that plumbing. So I generally, if, if it was coming through a wall, I would probably leave it higher and then just try to do a, uh, a 90 degree down to the heater because the heights can vary quite a bit on water heaters and depends on the gallon size and what you're putting in. So uh, in the case of this water heater, had it not been in there, um, and what you saw me do was I just pushed a, an extra amount of pipe up into the closet and then I cut the pipe off at the height that I put the, uh, the shark bite flex lines on the top of the heater, which I prefer to do. That way, if the heater ever was to get moved or you would need to, to drain it or whatever the case was, you're not hard piped into the line and you're not going to put a bunch of pressure on your plumbing. So I, I like those um, and that's what you saw me install. Now I still have to run the hot line, like I said. But I do that and then I will leave, like I said, that, that plumbing at kind of a, uh, an extra amount of length. That way I can cut it to the height necessary that I'm not putting my uh, supply lines for the heater in any kind of a major bind. I just try to keep them as straight as possible or, or ver whatever the, the installation is for you. But I've got a couple things that I'm going to walk around, show you like where I cut the supply into the floor. Um, so that I can reach the main. Uh, I've got a couple of drywall things I've been tackling. Now we had our drywaller come in, but he's been really busy. So there was quite a few things that I had to tackle in the house uh, that I wanted to include in the video. Not a lot of time, just a short snippet of what we had to do because I think there's some confusion around it. We had a couple of rooms that had wallpaper. So I was gonna kind of cover that. Um, and then a couple of things as far as information. I've got a couple new tools recently. I wanted to discuss one of them that I just recently received for my birthday. And then I also wanted to talk about 
the crimping tools that you're seeing me use in the video. Um, these are as good as it gets when it comes to tight spaces and, and trying to plumb. Um, One-handed operation in most cases. Uh, I've had the other tools that they make that are more of a two-handed operation and they will fit multiple different sizes of pipe. I do not prefer those. They're very tough to use. In most situations that I'm in, I don't have enough room to use them. Um, I used them for several years and I do not care for how they work. They will work if that's all you've got or that's all you can afford. I believe the two-handed crimp style for the Shark White brand is going to run you around $80. Um, these one-handed types are going to run you around $100 a pair. So I actually found um, a similar pair on Amazon that I was going to link in the description for people that uh, are going to have a hard time finding this type of crimper. I want to do a, a second and explain to the differences in the types of rings um, that you can use on PEX piping. They make a pinch style ring which is made out of sheet metal. I do not care for that. Um, it does work and I know a lot of people that use it. I personally don't care for it because it's steel. I don't really want the band to rust and I don't like that it just pinches in one spot. These are a type of ring that is, you probably saw them in the video, but they are a solid copper band. And when you crimp these, it crimps and, and compresses that band all the way around. So I prefer this style much more. Um, the tool goes completely around it and it's a copper, copper ring that just, it, it compresses the entire pipe. I also prefer using brass connectors instead of the plastic ones. It's all, I don't think there's a wrong answer here. It's what your preference is. I do a lot of bath outfits for us. I generally try to stay towards more of the overkill method because when it comes to plumbing, I don't want issues. So, you know, as far as this information goes, if it suits you, take it. If it doesn't, leave it. That's fine. Um, but I did find these types of crimpers, like I said, not this specific brand, but they appear to be exactly the same from what I found online, which I'll drop a link in the, in the description down below if you're interested in getting yourself a pair of these. If you do much PEX plumbing at all, I highly recommend these types of crimpers. But I'll uh, quit harping on that. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to explain and then I'll kind of take you around and show you some of the stuff on the house. And I don't know how much more filming I'll do in the crawl space. It is really tough with this camera. I don't have enough height between the joists to do a lot of filming. So what I'll probably do is, is go ahead and make up all my other connections and I'll do a final kind of crawl around in the crawl space. Um, when I get done and kind of show you how everything laid out because like I said, it's just for what you're watching I don't know that it's uh, all that helpful to anyone because it's just a lot of me trying to maneuver and roll around in the dirt So it's, it's really not going to be too entertaining But I do think that once it's all plumbed up and I can kind of crawl around with the camera and show you how different things go into different rooms that might benefit some of you, but you did you did get some footage and, sh and see me rerunning the main line and all the way out to the heater and putting in a new main valve. So that's pretty much it with that. One other little quick thing: uh, the guy that works with me and a buddy of mine got me this new Dewalt Bluetooth radio. I hadn't seen it on the market before. It might have been out for a while. Some of you might know better than I do. Um, this is by far the best DeWalt radio that I've had. Um, I've been using it while I'm working here and it's just a phenomenal tool. Um, I won't go into a ton of the specifics and the specs and stuff on it, but for guys that are, that are constantly on the job every day, maybe you just do a lot of work around the house and you, and you have DeWalt tools, this is the best radio. I've got several other DeWalt radios I don't care for this radio, the sound quality is not all that great. It does pick up AM, FM, and it will run off two different types of batteries. But the cord's really hard to stay wrapped up on it. And it's just the size, the weight, um, and the function of it. It doesn't do Bluetooth capabilities. It does have an auxiliary jack, which I don't care for that. 
um, because my iPhone doesn't even have an auxiliary jack on it um, like my Samsung used to. But this is Bluetooth capable. It still gives you the auxiliary jacks where you can charge your phone or plug in your uh, auxiliary jack for if you do have a phone that uses a headphone jack. It will take the 12 volt and 20 volt batteries. It comes with a cord to charge it. Um, and I really like, for me, I, I do play music and stuff like that. So sound, sound, quality, sound quality to me makes a big difference. And this radio sounds phenomenal um, compared to, you get some better sound quality out of the larger radio, but this is way too bulky for me to pack around every day. Um, so it pretty much just stays in the shop or the garage. Uh, and I've had issues out of this when it powers off and on, kind of does its own thing. I won't harp on that because that's probably just synonymous to this radio. I, I doubt that a lot of people have the same issue I'm having, but as far as the size and stuff, the only benefit you're getting to this one is, is that it will charge your batteries. But this newer one that they have came out with is great. It has a kickstand that holds your phone. You can run your charging cord through it. Um, you can lay it below the handle. It has a pocket for it. It's just a really, really good design. The Bluetooth range on it is really good. I watched a couple of guys' videos that do a full detailed review of this, this radio. And it's just a, a great size. I wanted to throw it out there to anybody who's thinking about purchasing this. It's well worth the money at $99. So I've seen it a couple places cheaper than that. If I can find it in that same price point, I'll throw a link in the description as well if you're interested in this radio. But I, if you get it, I definitely don't think you'll be disappointed. But I wanted to throw that in there because I had just recently got it. And we'll go over the rest of the plumbing and I'll get underneath the house, do that stuff. I'll take you on a quick walk around real quick and show you where I cut into the floor. And as well, I'll show you um, kind of what I've been having to uh, do as far as the drywall and the wallpaper repairs in the house. And just kind of throw some information in on that because I think some people do keep up with this channel. I know that th those things don't necessarily relate to the plumbing video, but I would say most people are also in the same boat if they're doing a whole house renovation. And it just, it's, it's really not enough information to create a, an entire separate video. So I'll link to that in there. If that's not what you want to see, you know, obviously just skip ahead and go back to plumbing. But um, I'll jump on that stuff and we'll catch you up on the plumbing once I get everything done in the crawl. All right, so here's one of the things, everybody. You might not even be able to tell it now because it is all skimmed out. But, I, well, you can see it over there. I have. The, a couple of these walls were paneling, um, and this is a half inch type of paneling, so it's very sturdy as far as it doesn't bow in when you push on the wall. But I had a couple of uh, walls in here that the wife was wanting to get rid of uh, the paneling look, so I skimmed out all of the joints in the paneling. The reason I didn't want to take a lot of it off is it's half inch, so it's flush with my drywall over here and I have insulation cellulose behind these panels so I didn't want to lose all my insulation. Additional cost for more drywall, finishing out all the drywall joints. It's just as easy. I wouldn't skim out quarter inch paneling because you're probably going to pop all of the, the grooves out of it at some point. <clears throat> I'm going to get a new camera. This is a really hard camera to hold and film so I apologize for the shaky video. But uh, the, the paneling will skim out if you have a half inch paneling. Um, that is an option uh, for someone who's wanted a meticulously, uh, you know, flawless wall. Might not be your thing, but it's very smooth. I honestly don't know that once it's painted, you'll ever know that this was paneling. But I can, when we get to that point on the house, I can kind of show you and you'll be able to see how smooth the wall is. But I'll take you in one of the back bedrooms where some of the, the wallpaper was, uh, the guys that came in and stripped it off. It pulled into a lot of the um, paper backing uh, and I know that's something that a lot of people fight and have issues on. I was going to film on it the other night and I thought nobody really wants to see that but I did figure I would go ahead and just include a little bit of information what I did there um, in the middle of this video. So I'll take you in the other room and uh, show you what we've been messing with. Alright everybody, so if you've been keeping up with any of my latest videos, you've probably seen this room. Uh, it is the hall bathroom, so there's a tub here, 
uh, you've got vanity and toilet configuration out here. But <clears throat> for those of you who wanted to see kind of what it looked like, if you go back a couple of videos, you'll be able to see how badly torn into some of this wallpaper was. Um, I can kind of show you a couple spots over here um, where I'm in the process of skimming it out and you know you you can see a couple of bubbles and stuff in the wall but if you've got wallpaper issues in the house that you're working on or your home or you're remodeling whatever um, and you and you tear out wallpaper and it rips into the drywall and gets into the brown paper the backing of the of the drywall you can't just skim over that um, with normal drywall mud it will bubble that paper and you'll have just as not it just as much if not more problems than you probably did with the wallpaper so what uh, my drywaller actually referred us to do was if you take an oil base um, paint sorry I had backwards uh, this is a cover stain primer Zinzar you can get it at Home Depot I think it's around twenty dollars a gallon but if you take a oil based paint and paint over those uh, torn away sections it will allow you to skim that and that paper not bubble on you so like i said i won't spend a ton of time on it this room in here i still haven't skimmed out yet but i have taken the paint and went around painted over all of the really uh, bad torn in two spots but like i said if you go back a couple videos you'll be able to see how badly damaged that wall was um, this is one skim that's just painted so no skim yet so it, it does work if you're having issues with that you might try this method paint over it and then you should be good as far as your drywall all right everybody so we're in the room that the main is below me in the floor right here um, so what i did was is i'll angle the camera down i've cut in a four by ten square into the floor in that way uh, i'll be able to put a four by ten floor register in just basically like what you have as far as your heating and air coming out of the floor in your house and then that way I don't have some goofy uh, hinge door or some odd looking piece in the floor so that I can reach the main I wanted to have something that blended with the room and still you know made it functional to be able to get to that main shut off so I'll take my phone and shine light down in here so you can see um, I'll turn this around so here's our main um, once you saw me you know plumbing up in the crawl space yesterday so um, like I said basically the, the, the point is so that I can get access to that main uh, don't think that really requires a lot of explanation as to why but just kind of wanted to show you how that was going to lay out in the house so I will go ahead and work on finishing up my um, plumbing in the crawl space when I get done with all of that I'll take you and kind of do a, a walk around on as far as how all the plumbing plumbing hooked up. So stay tuned and we'll have more for you. Hey everybody, so in the video earlier, you saw me working with the main feed coming in the house. That was the first uh, footage I shot of uh, doing the plumbing in the crawl. And where the main comes into the house, they had a pressure regulator um, hard plumbed in. Now you saw me take that out. And the reason I did that was because I know a lot of the houses in our area specifically, the water pressure is not high enough to justify a pressure regulator. Um, I only live, like I think I explained in one of the previous videos, I only live about a half a mile from the house that we're working on remodeling. Our pressure is pretty low. Um, my parents' house that was about built about five years ago behind us, theirs was really low. We actually had to put a booster pump in on their house to up the pressure. My neighbors had to do that as well. So I had a pretty good, good assumption that the pressure wasn't going to be high enough to cause an issue. Um, but just for uh, sake of checking it and not having an issue with any of my piping, I wanted to show you that we I did uh, get a, a gauge so that way I could check the pressure and make sure that we didn't have too high a pressure in the house. Now this falls well within uh, reasonable specifications. I wanted to make sure I didn't have anything excessive over a hundred, you know, 110 PSI, something like that. Uh, but I do have it checked and I'll show you on the video that <clears throat> the gauge is reading, um, if I can zoom in on it here, about 80 PSI.
But anyways, I just wanted to show you that and make sure that, um, you know, it is something that if you're going to cut a pressure regulator out, it's probably a good idea to, to check that and make sure that you're not going to have an issue and just put a gauge on, um, you know, one of your shut off or one of your supplies in your house just to, to make sure that, you know, it's, you're not getting some kind of excessive thing. So now I'm going to go and I've got all the other plumbing done down in the crawl space. Um, so I'm going to hop under there. I've got to close this floor up in the hall bathroom because we have tilers coming tomorrow to start prepping. There was some debate on whether or not I might tile it myself, but with just time constrict or constraints and everything else and trying to get a lot of the other things done on the house, it's just something we're going to let one of our subs do. So um, I have to patch that floor in tonight. So I'll go ahead while I've still got the floor open, hop under there. I'll kind of show you how you know a lot of the plumbing laid out and um, that'll pretty much wrap this video up so all right everybody so we're down in the crawl space i'm going to show you um, pretty much how everything laid out i only have a couple of other uh, connections to make down here and i'll do that once our uh, island goes in which is the two sink supplies and the refrigerator supply so i just basically have those feeds laying loose for the for the time being but i'll turn the camera around uh, so <clears throat> the uh, the blue line there is one of my vanity or yeah vanity feed, and then you know the red line's the other vanity feed, and then on the other side um, I have <clears throat> the main main run that you saw me installing the other day, and that that 90 right there is where it's going up to my water heater. Uh, and then this is the T down from the hot side of the water heater. <clears throat> and on this side, this is where most of the plumbing uh, in the crawl pretty much I had to do, which is there's two toilets here. Um, there's the washer box. There's uh, both my shower feed offs where it loops and bends right over in here um, is where it goes out to my front spigot. So. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, it wasn't too bad to get underneath here and replumb everything. Um, PEX has made everything so much easier and you get the copper out of your water lines and your drinking water. Um, you know, so it's, th there's some benefits to, uh, you know, using the PEX and, um, it's just so much easier to work with. And I think it's been around long enough to really prove itself where most of new construction is is plumbed in PEX and I just I wanted that peace of mind before we moved in that everything would be in good shape so we appreciate you hanging out with us on this video and um, you know we we look forward to seeing you on more videos and if uh, if you like these type of videos you know feel free to leave us a comment a like subscribe anything share the video but other than that, uh, I think that wraps this video up, and we appreciate it. Take care, and have a good day.